My name is KJ. I'm the researcher of Brahma OS T. As we mentioned last time, today we'll talk about the graph chain data structure. When we look at the data structure, it's required to know some computer science data structure knowledge. First, let's talk about the chain data structure. The chain data structure is very popular. Most of chain like a Bitcoin uses data structure. So each cycle is called a block. One block contains a lot of transactions inside. I bet you must be familiar with this kind of chain data structure. Let's talk about the disadvantage. Imagine why we have to put a lot of transactions into one block. It's for performance. In this design, there should be enough interval time between two blocks. It's a time for block broadcasting spreading. If we limited the size to allow only one transaction inside, then the transaction per hour will be 6. Second, let's take a look at DAG data structure. DAG not only propose the data structure like this, but also remove the miners. So any user can generate new block. The DAG node is like a big database, allows anyone to insert micro records. Yes, the records are the blocks. Those blocks are not listed in order. It's in DAG data structure. For the double spending problem, as there's no miners in the system, user will not get confirmation notification when the transaction was confirmed. The only way user to make sure the transaction they have made is to keep inquiring if there's more guys confirming my transactions. Finally, let's look at the graph chain. The graph chain data structure looks like this. The cycle is called a non-transaction block. Usually it stands for an account. It has one output point. The square is called a transaction block. It has two inputs and two outputs. Inside the transaction block, there are two points. The above part stands for sender. The below part stands for receiver. Transaction block represents the two user accounts balance after current transaction. I hope those explanations will be easily to understand. Okay, thank you.